All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory due to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rechakodash. I want to give double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Peace and salutations and many blessings to you, elect Akim, across the four winds of this earth, kicking this word in sincerity and truth, serving the Heavenly Father with one mind, serving Him within great servitude through the Spirit. Okay, um, the lesson that I want to go into today is going to be a lesson based upon um, the word eunuch. Okay, and um, just I remember uh, Elder Ariala went into this a while back through the Spirit. Um, I was just doing some reading and re came across this topic. So, um, just want to put a few things on whack here, on uh, wax here, so we can um, receive the proper understanding on what eunuch means on certain parts of the scriptures. Okay, now, typically, let's see, let's just type it in. When you go to the word eunuch, or matter of fact, how about this? I'm going to just look it up. Because when you think of the word eunuch, naturally, one is going to think of uh, an, an individual that's uh, castrated okay so let's see here i have the word eunuch pulled up in a dictionary on um, on google and it says a man who has been castrated especially in the past and then it says one employed to guard the woman's living areas at the oriental court okay now when you go into that again one who is castrated meaning um that's a man who has his uh his genitalia is removed okay and a lot of times um when they would do that of course, that would one, of course, bring forth no distractions in a man because, you know, I mean, if you take his genitalia away, of course, you ain't going to be worried about nothing too much, you know. And also, too, you would set up certain men like that to guard your woman. And this is ancient times, how they did in the ancient ways. A lot of time, those ancient Romans, uh, the Babylonians, a lot of ancient cultures had done that. You know, they would have them on, um, on guards for women's living areas. You know what I'm saying? For example, you put a man that don't got his junk around a bunch of women the woman ain't gonna be worried about nothing you know what i'm saying well pretty much naturally when you go into that word eunuch that's what it means okay because when that's taking place you have your one mind set on one thing and that's the job at hand okay so that's the natural definition of when you go actually go into the word eunuch okay but um you find a few scriptures here and i'm gonna bring the first one out here in isaiah 56 because you um, find it interesting once you read it, and a lot of people will go to this scripture and have you thinking that, um, you know, uh, one, uh, um, a man can't have a woman or anything like that. And and also a lot of Christians like to go into that and they'll pull this verse up and pull it up in Revelations, the Revelation, the 14th chapter as well, where it talks about being virgins. But that's not what it's talking about. OK, when you go into the word eunuch here in Isaiah, the 56th chapter. I'm going to read it. It says, Thus saith Yahweh, Keep ye judgment and do justice. For my salvation is near to come and my righteousness to be revealed. Okay, now when we read that, within us having a mindset of um, being the hopeful elect, putting on the elect, we read these scriptures and everything we read, we put it to ourselves. We keep it to mind as it's the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh speaking to us because it is. OK, so what he's telling us is his salvation is near and that's something we all need to take heed to. It's not a far off. You see plenty of uh, prophecies taking place. Um, it's a lot of marvelous works being done through the spirit. OK, so when we see these things take place, we need to marvel at it and continue to praise Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. OK, verse two says, blessed is the man that doeth this. OK, and what does the word blessed mean? OK, when you go into it, it means happy. OK, and also blessed is another name for for um, it's another description for a man that has a great abundance. OK, that's why you'll see certain people with money that say they blessed. OK, but um, the elect ultimately are, are given the Holy Spirit and faith through abundance. OK, so um, in verse two, it says, blessed is the man that doeth this and the son of man that layeth hold on it. That keep it the Sabbath from polluting it and keep it this hand from doing any evil. All right. So that goes into following the Yahweh Shim Yahweh Shai. Of course, we do it to the best of our ability. Okay. But what are one of the Ten Commandments? Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Okay. And that's something that we're very um, serious about. Okay. Well, first and foremost, that's something the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, is very serious about. 
Okay, so of course, if he established it to put it out there, we're supposed to do it okay to the best of our ability. Okay, and it says, um, and keepeth his hands from doing any evil. Okay, what does that mean? It means to be innocent. Okay, the scriptures always talk about the blessing a man who has clean hands is going to receive. Okay, and goes into being innocent. All right, now check this out. It says, neither let the son of the stranger. Now it's talking about the son of the stranger. But before it said, blesses the man that doeth this and the son of man that layeth hold. Now in verse three, it says, neither let the son of the stranger that hath joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, the Lord hath utterly separated me from the people. OK, now that's not talking about physical Gentiles. The son of the stranger is talking about Israelites that were carried into captivity and were following customs and were brought back pertaining to us. OK, it says, neither let the son of the stranger where the children where the, their children. OK, you look at your father, your mother, you know, namely your father and their father, they call themselves African-Americans. Even back then, a lot of them was calling themselves Greeks, Romans, Turks. All right. But they weren't calling themselves Israelites. OK, but where are the sons of those strangers? OK, as much as people can say, oh, the Lord stopped dealing with Israel, start dealing with everybody else. No, man, we need to understand we're still part of that seed. OK, neither let the son of the stranger that have joined himself to the Lord speak, saying the Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. Now, check this out. Neither let the eunuch say, behold, I am a dry tree. OK, so again. One who doesn't have the most proper understanding will think that this is talking about three different types of people. The eunuch, the son of the stranger, and the son of man. Okay? No, all those three tie into one. That's talking about the same person. A person is going to be considered blessed. They keep the Sabbaths and keep their hands from doing evil. Who doesn't worry about them being separated and ain't calling themselves a dry tree. Okay? Now, when you go into that word eunuch, again, when you go into the original definition, that'll go into somebody that's castrated. OK, but we all know, especially the ones that Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah loves a lot. One thing he didn't have, period, allow was for us to not be able to bear seed. OK, that's one thing we got to get straight. That whole eunuch thing, a lot of cultures did it. You know what I'm saying? But Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah wasn't down with that. Okay, when you go into Unix, let me pull this up here in the scriptures in a blue letter. Okay, so I type the word eunuch in. All right. And the first time you see the word eunuch written is in Isaiah chapter 56. Okay, now let's go to the word eunuch. All right, you got it in 1 Kings 9 and 32, and it says, And he lifted up his face to the window and said, who was on this side who and there looked out on him there are two or three eunuchs okay so pretty much you know where i'm going at is you don't have eunuch written too much in the scriptures now on certain occasions it is written as a man that is castrated but it's a reason why you don't see it in the books of moses and what the heavenly father is talking about you know what i'm saying because pretty much he, he wouldn't deliberately allow that being done to our people all right and if it was to happen we were, we were we were pretty much casted out okay it talks about the man who has an issue down there within his loins loosely paraphrasing okay so going back to it in isaiah 56 it says for thus saith the lord unto the eunuchs that keep my sabbaths and choose the things that are pleasing unto me and take hold of my covenant okay so now we're saying the eunuchs that keep his sabbath all right now when you go into the word eunuchs and I'm going to pull it up here in Isaiah 56 again. I want us to think it's one that's castrated. So let's pull that up here. The word eunuch. And you find this interesting. The word there is saryas in the ancient Hebrew. Okay, but it says an official or a eunuch. All right. So when you go down and when you go into the, the Chaldean lexicon, I'm going to read this to you and it says a eunuch one castrated were accustomed to set over the care of their woman which is what i read and their off and their offices of the court okay so they were also that was a title to one who was an officer of a court it says the prince of the eunuchs who was over the royal children 
just as now in Turkey, okay, the king of the eunuchs has the charge of royal children of the sultan called Isthoglan, if I pronounced it right. And then check this out. It says any minister of the court, although not castrated, although it is difficult to determine in what place the primary meaning of the word is preserved and in what is lost. And it gives you different references right here. And it says is a military leader. OK. And then it says Targum sometimes renders it a prince or a minister. The Syriac version, however, always renders it a eunuch. And it says faithful as eunuchs were considered remarkable for fidelity to their masters. And so, OK, so when you go into this eunuch right here in Isaiah 56, it's talking about one who was faithful and who was the master ultimately, the heavenly father. That's why I went into keeping his customs, keeping his Sabbaths, keeping your hands from doing evil, not worried about being separated and all that and not calling yourself a dry tree. OK, if you have complete faith in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, all right, you're going to do the things that he told you to, to the best of your ability. OK, but that's the blessing that the eunuch or oh, it goes into the blessing. But when you go into that eunuch, it means one who shows remarkable faith. OK, it means a servant. Because a servant is going to what? A servant is going to do what his master tells him. Okay. And he's going to be remarkable at that job. Okay. He's going to be as single-minded as possible. That's why the scriptures talk about in Matthew, if thine eye be single, thy body shall be full of light. Okay. And what does that mean? To be single-minded, to keep your mind according to the plan, to, to at the task at hand. Okay. These words that was written. Okay. Now we understand we can't follow all 613 laws is impossible. Okay, but what do Yahweh Shai say? For these are the two greatest commandments. Love the most high with all your heart and all thy soul. And love thy brother as thyself. And ye have fulfilled the law. Okay, and we, th we do that within getting closer to the Lord. All right. As our father David was a man after the Lord's heart. That's how we have to be. Okay. And within that, he's he's going to, you know, give you. When I say give you position, he's going to raise you. He's going to raise you up on a level. Okay. Now, this is the reward when you read this here in verse five, even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place in a name better than of sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that should not be cut off. So you mean to tell me out of the ones that are castrated, you know, what I'm saying he's going to he's going to give them better, better, better walls than his sons and daughters and all that, you know, so if you castrated. And you just call him the Lord. He's going to give you a better reward. No, that's not what it's talking about. It goes into if you're willing to serve him with all your heart and all your soul. All right. Being single minded in this work. Keeping keeping the keeping the task at hand. OK. Showing remarkable fidelity towards your master. That's how you're going to receive an inheritance in the temple. Now, ultimately, the elect were were founded since, since the foundations of the earth, since before the foundations of the earth. So they're already, already going to um, reenact these roles, you know, but still, still, they're going to be they're going to be single minded down here in the flesh. OK, I got another scripture I'm going to pull up here. And let's see. here. It's going to be in the book of Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter three. All right. So this is wisdom of Solomon chapter chapter uh, three. I'm going to start at verse. Um, let's see here. I'm going to start at, 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 a, at, a, at a good spot. Let's see. I'm going to start at 11. It says, for whoso despiseth wisdom and nurture, he is miserable, and their hope is vain. Their labors unfruitful. And what does labors mean? That means um, your works unfruitful. All right. You didn't profit anything from it if, if you despise wisdom. And their works unprofitable. Their wives are foolish and their children are wicked. And that's who you see out here, especially pertaining to Jake. You so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans. That's the chief impenity 
from you and what these curses have done to you. Okay. Verse 13 says their offspring is cursed. Wherefore, blessed is the barren that is undefiled, which hath not known a sinful bed. She shall have fruit in the visitation of souls. Okay. Now you do got women that are out there still, you know, that are going to end up receiving salvation as well. All right. Now we understand it's a lot. Of, a lot of it's going to be through through a man, you know, but there's just certain women that's going to be out there. You know, you got the ancient woman that did those righteous acts back in the ancient world and they're back here today. Okay. And they're not going to be within that category. Now, there might have been a point of time where they were on sinful beds and all that, you know. But hey, man, Yahweh Yahweh Shai is merciful on who's worthy enough to receive mercy. Okay. But it says she shall have fruit in the visitation of her souls. So she's going to have she's going to have children when that time comes. Okay. In the kingdom. Now, verse 14 is the key point. It says, and blessed is the eunuch, right? Now, this ain't talking about somebody that's castrated. Okay. It says, and blessed is the eunuch, which with his hands wrought no iniquity. Now, that goes right hand to hand with what was read in um, Isaiah, the 56th chapter, where it clearly said, even unto them, I will give. I was, I'm sorry. It talked about. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back. Isaiah 56 and 2, it says, blessed is the man that doeth this and the son of man that layeth hold on it. And keep it the Sabbath from polluting it and keep it his hands from doing evil. OK, so when you read about the eunuch in Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 14, it's very similar to it talking about the son of man in Isaiah 56 and 2, which shows you they're one of the same. That's what it's pertaining to, because of the son of the son of man pertaining to this is talking about, um, you know, pretty much um, son of man means son of the ground. OK, whenever it says that. But when you go into it, it's talking about the individual that Israelite that's willing to serve Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai and have clean hands. Be faithful. Remarkable fidelity. When you read about the eunuch here, I write in this particular verse in Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 14, in Isaiah 56, it's talking about somebody who shows remarkable faith. Okay, fidelity. It says, And blessed is the eunuch which with his hands had wrought no iniquity, nor imagined wicked things against the Most High. For unto him shall be given a special gift of faith. See, that eunuch is that man of fidelity and more will be added unto him. And an inheritance in the temple of the Lord more acceptable to his mind. OK, so that goes hand in hand with Isaiah 56, where it talks about how you're going to be within his walls. OK, you're going to have an inheritance better than the sons and his daughters. OK, it's talking about a name that you'll have that, that you that you'll have that won't be cut off. All right, you're talking about a line on top of a line of children, man. We were talking about it a few days ago. And the inheritance of the elect, man, the blessing that we're going to receive, Lord, when we those men, is going to be immense. The Heavenly Father is continually stretching out space and stretching everything out just, just to fit everything for us. Even Yahweh said, you know, I go to prepare a place for you, you know. And then he said in my father's house is many mansions. So something big is being prepared for us, man. We're going to have a blessing, man. <laughs> if we keep that faith. So like if it sounds like, if it sounds like I'm all over the place, but I'm excited. Verse 15 says, for glorious is the fruit of good labors. All right. And what is that good labors returning to? Servitude. All right. Being faithful. Being single minded to the task that's at hand. It says glorious is the fruit of that. All right. And the root of wisdom shall never fade away. All right. So glorious is the fruit of those good labors. Right. Makes you think of uh, Second Timothy and I'll pull it up. Give me one sec. Bump the show. This is Second Timothy, chapter two. And I'm going to read uh, verse six. Well, I'm going to start at verse five. And it says, if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully? And the only way to do that is have your eyes single. Verse six says the husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. OK, so if you're out laboring and toiling, you're going to be the first partaker of those fruits. So pertaining to these faithful men or these eunuchs in Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 14 and also in Isaiah 56, when you read that, that's the reward for men that show remarkable faith on this side. 
Okay? And you even have an example of certain men. And I'm going to pull this up. And it's going to be the, my last one. And this is going to be in Daniel. Because when you read about this here in Daniel. This will have you thinking that Daniel was a castrated man. And Daniel wasn't no castrated man. Daniel wasn't castrated. All right. This is the book of Daniel chapter one. I'm going to start from the top. And it says, in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hands. All right. So Jehoiakim, who's the king of Judah, who ultimately he was set up by Nebuchadnezzar anyway. You know what I'm saying? He was um, he was exiled from, from um, Jerusalem and thrown in prison. OK, it says with part of the vessels of the house of the most high, which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God. And he brought vessels into the treasure's house of his God. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs. OK, now, when you go into those eunuchs here, all right, you have you actually do have physical eunuchs. OK, I'm, don't don't think I'm trying to say that when you see the word eunuch in the scriptures, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's talking about somebody that's castrated. OK, but you also have men who show extreme faith toward their master. OK, that's another version of a eunuch. All right. To be in complete servitude under your master. OK. And when you go into eunuch pertaining to this here, it ultimately goes to noble men who were chosen to aid the king. OK. That's why it says um, in the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuch. So there was a certain man named Ashpenaz who who uh, Nebuchadnezzar set to his side and he was the master of his eunuchs. OK. And these nobles, all these eunuchs came out of Jerusalem or came out of Israel. OK. You needed certain men there to show the king where certain um, places were where jewels were or, or precious stones were or the certain type of trees that were over there. Good water springs to drink out of. OK, you needed men to aid you within that, to give you knowledge about the area that you're getting ready to take over. All right. And it says that he should bring certain of the children of Israel in the king's seed of the princess. All right. So these were noble families out of the king's seeds or noble prince's seeds in Israel that he had called to be eunuchs. OK, verse four says children of whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom. And cunning to knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace. OK, so these were men that had knowledge to aid the king and their knowledge ended up being so great that the king ended up putting them on his side to aid him in his palace. Now, you have certain men in history that this also um, applied to. You had Joseph, you had Mordecai. There were different men in history that aided the king. That does not mean they were physical eunuchs. That doesn't mean that. All right. They they had knowledge and their their help aiding the king. He put them on a seat by them. That's why Daniel sat by Nebuchadnezzar. You know, that's why uh, Mordecai sat by. Um, I can't remember the um, if a brother knows the name of it. They can post in the comment board. That'd be what's up. I can't remember right off the head, but he sat by him during the Medio Persian Empire. OK, you had uh, you had Joseph sit next to sit next to the Pharaoh. So it says in whom they might teach the learning in the tongue of the Chaldeans. OK, so they even had to teach. They had to teach the tongues. OK, now certain men out of these men, when you jump down, it says and the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank. So nourished them three years that at the end, therefore, they might stand before the king. Now, among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Okay, so you had the children of Judah, those four individuals. All right, so you have Daniel and those other three. Now, when you went to it earlier, it went to how these men were skillful in all wisdoms, right? Okay, when you read it in Wisdom of Sodom, the third chapter, it talks about blessed be the eunuch. All right, and the only way to be within that category of that spiritual eunuch or being in servitude under the most high is what getting closer to wisdom. OK, because when you read it in wisdom of Solomon, the third chapter. I'm going to go back to it in verse 11. It says, for whoso despiseth the wisdom and nurture, he is miserable and their vain is is hope Their I'm sorry, their their hope is vain. Their labor is unfruitful and their works unprofitable. 
Okay, so it went into those who despise wisdom. But those who want to take heed to wisdom and adhere to it will receive an inheritance. Okay, being receive an inheritance in the temple of the Lord. Now we understand the eunuch in Daniel chapter one is pertaining to being a noble sitting next to the actual king in, in wisdom of Solomon. It means to be a faithful man. But that doesn't change the fact that Daniel, Meshach, Shag, Rat, and Abednego, or as what was read in um, verse 6, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, can't tell me these men weren't skillful in wisdom within the Heavenly Father to be granted those gifts. Okay? And you can read about their acts when you read about it. Meshach, Shag, Rat, and Abednego were thrown in the fire and delivered from it. And Daniel was thrown in the lion's den. And through that remarkable faith, they were rewarded. Okay? So, you know, it's a lot more to go into, but ultimately when you go into this in Wisdom of Solomon 3 and Isaiah 56, that's talking about us, okay? And Daniel, Meshach, Shagrat, and Abednego are also examples of us as well through the spirit. Now, of course, they were their own individual people, but they were men who understood all wisdoms and they were gifted with different things. And those gifts came from above ultimately. And they only received that through their faith. All right, and through more faith, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah will give us more. Okay, so again, I'm going to end it off in Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 14. And it says, And blessed is the eunuch, which with his hands had wrought no iniquity, nor imagined wicked things against the Most High. For unto him shall be given a special gift of faith, and an inheritance in the temple of the Lord more acceptable to his mind. All right, so Lord, when this lesson was edifying, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Shimmer Kakodash, double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings and salutations to you, elect Akim, kicking this word of sincerity and in truth. Shalom.